Hello again. So I'm going to show you a few things that I bought or that I already had, but I will take to Ukraine um, for the bike that I've got there. So this is going to show you a few things that I will discuss and test and uh, write about on my website as well soon. That starts. Uh, so pinion oil. I bought two of these, but actually I should have only bought one, but I did not know this yet. This is a Buck Crockett channel on YouTube. Priority 600 Pinion Gearbox Oil Viscosity Mystery Solved. The Pinion didn't want to say what kind of oil they use in their gearboxes, which is just stupid as if this is some kind of secret. It's 75W80 oil. At least it was, was tested by Blackstone Labs. And I didn't find anything like that in the Netherlands yet. Because they, he could very cheaply get it tested. Like $35. Which is uh, not, not much. I, I could just uh, get this oil tested. And don't really care about it. Just have another data point. Compared to compare it. If it's indeed 75W80. But if I in any case. 90 is easier to find. 80 I could find as well. If I had seen this video earlier, I would have already bought it with the other stuff that I bought. Um, so one of what, that's what I want to do, change the oil, but also some, to check the creaking, check if the bolts are all, bolts are all tight of the pinion in the frame. But to, re, to get at some bolts, you need to remove the, the belt ring. And for that, you need this... But also a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter hex key for the crank. So that's what I'm going to use this for. Uh, so I'll take this set with me. I bought a second set, but this was time with the holding function. These are the Vera Hex Plus. If you want to see uh, yeah, why they are better, check out the normal hex keys. Check out German Tool Reviews. He did some tests on... Uh, the bolts with the Viha, which is one of the tightest, one of the best fitting, uh, along with um, PB Swiss. And Hex Plus just ca came out as being better. And with, what was it, Project Farm, he also came out, the top two were the Viha and the Vera. But considering the advantages of the Vera, of less deformation of the hex bolt head at high torques, torque, but also easier to remove damaged torque uh, head uh, bolts with damaged heads. Uh, my my choice would be the Vera Hex Plus. Here the color coding has been changed. So this was one of the points of criticism that I read, and don't really care. So yeah, I, I felt it as well. So these. These two yellows are a bit too close together in color, so they change that to to yeah purple. Um, yeah, the, hex, the holding function is useful, for example, to put a bolt where you can not so easily get with your fingers to keep a bolt steady. You can just put the bolt on the end and just put it in where you want to want what to do want to place it. For example, where it's uh, recessed a bit or even in some with some bottle cages, for example, you can. It's hard to get edits, and uh, yeah, it's easier to just use this hex holding function, and then push the bolts where it needs to go, and then turn it, and it will go in. <coughs> so another issue I had, besides the creaking of the the or either the belt or the the mount of the pinion. So I would I would check. I still need a belt. Uh, um, a strap wrench, by the way. I saw so, so one from um, what was it from Gates, and it looked looked nice, looked nicely designed. Because some 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 of these strap wrenches are really badly designed. They put some metal where it can touch the the, the belt ring or other device that you're trying to uh, trying to remove, and just yeah it, it's just not bad not not well designed from one from az for example oh yes az where there's an issue with this i bought this as well for toolkit second toolkit and i don't know if you can see it like this but there's a there 
The ends are not not the same. They're not there's a tor torsion in it, but also there it's absolutely not straight. This is one of the worst tools I've ever seen. So this is from HZ, eight and ten millimeters, which is useful for for uh, for bicycles. And yes, it's absolutely really bad. Let me see where I can where I can show it along. Oh, this this would be useful, I think, to use this or something. This is magnetic on one side. Here you can see this. Ah, perhaps too much light. You can see between it, uh, other places not, and one end is just. This is, this is not quality. I'm going to write to HZ about this. This is absolutely bad. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, strap wrench. HZ. That's what I, what I was reminded about HZ. HZ makes one of these strap wrenches where they where the have a, sort of a belt. And on one side it's it's in a loop with some um, some metal that keeps it together, it's fixed together, and that can touch whatever you're you want to try to keep from rotating, which is just stupid. I don't know what some people are thinking with their design. So this one I bought because I wanted to use it in my second toolkit. I have one for Ukraine and one here. Um, what I'm also going to take to Ukraine, um, some, yeah, this is in Beschraubensicherung, so it's Loctite, this 20 milliliter or 20 grams. This one I've used for ages, it's from uh, Henkel, which is also a German company, it makes uh, various glues, etc. I've used this for a decade or probably, or possibly more, and they say, I read somewhere that... Look, these these types of the Loctite uh, tubes that they won't last more than say a year once after opening. But I've used this for a decade and it's still fine. So I'm not sure what's if it's really the true or if it's only for some types. Uh, yeah, oh, this one I want to take um, with me for the 10 millimeter hex key because I need a 10 millimeter hex key to remove a bolt for the crank for the so yeah you need a lot of stuff for uh, for everything let's see what else um the iqx the old uh, the first one and this is the one from from the bike that i bought in ukraine mm, yeah i will talk a little bit about it later so what i bought as well some grips with a cork cork and yeah some cork rubber grip mixture something like that these work very well what you do need to realize uh yeah in general i mean some some were a bit sticky which i don't like but you can get that with rubber grips as well so you need to check which one works well i noted that on my website which are problematic and which are fine so this one i wanted to try out fairly cheap from hermans it feels good, and so what I mentioned about the full cork cork grips, I don't like the grip. It's it's not enough in many cases, especially when it's a bit wet or so. I don't really like the grip at all, or a uh, sweaty, for example, when it's hot. Yeah, I wasn't satisfied. I have a little bit shorter stem, so I bought a lot of stuff, and I could have bought it perhaps in the Ukraine, but it's much easier in the Netherlands, more much more choice. Uh, from um, a lot of companies don't deliver to Ukraine anyway, so from in, in Ukraine shops are there are not many bike shops. They are very poorly equipped. In Kiev you can find some that have a really uh, relatively good assortment of stuff that you may want to use. But yeah, that's that's one or two bike shops in a big city, whereas in the Netherlands almost all bike shops have most things that you want or can easily order it and it'll be there the next day 
Um, yeah, so a few other things. I'll take some stainless steel bolts with me, various source types, uh, thicknesses, etc. Spare tubes. I brought some brake pads for disc brakes. I have this. This I've already I've had this for years, but this is for 31.8 handlebar. And I think it'll work well on the bike in Ukraine, which also has a 31.8 handlebar. This, or perhaps another bell for to replace the knock oil, which doesn't work well. Um, this is a set forward seat post. I will take that with me to try out. B67 with the old style springs, 4.95 millimeters instead of 4.55, I think it was. These are fairly stiff springs, but I'll see how well they work in Ukraine in that kind of terrain. And the white saddle, how well it works. The Cane Creek Threadbuster, this has a fairly soft elastomer, but I didn't really like it in the, in the Netherlands. I didn't feel it added anything. Perhaps it's because the, the roads are good enough that uh, really you don't have much advantage of this. Um... I will see. In the Ukraine, the roads are a lot worse in most places, so maybe this will work well. By the way, I put contact glue here between or on both sides of this insert, which keeps the saddle rail along with this outer piece and the uh, this piece of the seat post itself and on both sides to keep the saddle rail from rotating because after a bump I often had that it was from like this it would be like that and with contact glue used here that's a thing of the past downside is you need to take everything apart again if you want to change the angle a little bit you can't adjust anymore it's a bit of downside but I yeah not I don't like this for the Netherlands it's useless maybe it'll work better in rougher on rougher roads but in any case also I will take this one with me I'm going to try it as well in the Netherlands here um, the Suntour NCX SP12 um, so this I've used um, various types of sprung seat posts before this one uh, namely yeah, the, the ones where the where you go up and down like this, but there's no other mechanism. And the downside of that is that this, as the seat is at an angle and you go bumps, force from bumps are like this, you get that the um, you get sideways friction uh, of the whole mechanism. Uh, so I've used cheap seat posts and an air wings, which is fairly expensive. I never really liked them. Uh, I didn't like this one either, so maybe this will work for me. Uh, for the saddles, I liked the softer springs on the older saddles, but not so much these. So maybe that will change in Ukraine, in a bit worse roads. Maybe I will like some of these things more. So this one I will use with that saddle. Uh, so uh, yeah, so seat. Saddle with springs plus a spring sprung seat post. I would not recommend it. Feels mushy. I've, tr I've tried it with this one. This one with I think this saddle. Absolutely don't like that. Um, yeah, I forget. Oh wait a minute. What did I mention? Uh, so one of the issues with these, uh, you need to uh, watch out. Some some are a bit sticky, but I've only had it with one so far. I mentioned it on my website. I'm not yet sure what this is, is going to be like because yeah, temperatures are not so high now. Uh, one of the issues with these cork and rubber grip mixtures is that they will wear down. That's different from uh, leather grips, for example. Leather grips will, will last decades, but these will not. They will eventually you will lose quite a bit of material over a few years. This is a bit of a downside. Mm, what else? Ah, yes, yes. I will take this with me, which is a inline gauge, pressure gauge. Not very big, not very heavy. So I said, okay, I'll try this. Because gauges on these types of pumps are usually crap. They're very badly readable. Like this. Yeah, I don't like it. It's much easier to read this type of gauge 
Um, then one more thing. I think that's it. This is the Ergotec EP1 pedal, which is about the same size as the Pedaling Innovations pedal, which I mentioned before. Uh, so Pedaling Innovations have this pedal and they put this idea forward of pedaling with the, here the center of your foot at the pedal. Downside is that you might get, uh, you might hit your front wheel, so you get toe overlap as it's called uh, but yeah I, I didn't really feel it was really adding anything for me people say well it's really better a lot better you feel it can put out more power I don't get tired I don't feel anything like that I tried it with the Shimano PDEF 205 which has a metal plus a, um, a plastic insert so it's one large surface with a lot of like pins but plastic and it gives really good grip large surface area but i don't feel that it works any better than normal pedaling so i'm curious if this works so this is about the same size about 13 centimeters so this is 20 but this and this is 13 so this is a quite large pedal they're not very heavy not you know, not measured it precisely but it's not really heavy i think they're lighter than the shimano pedal that i used i've ridden with the center position for quite a while in the netherlands but even more in ukraine on long trips also a bit in poland i didn't really feel that it added anything but maybe this will help with the larger surface area larger yeah larger size and yeah by the way it's not really a new idea it's it's been used for decades if not forever in the netherlands uh, i've seen in my youth uh, people pedaling with the feet like centered on the axle and not here with the ball of the feet over the axle. And that's been been that way forever. You can see it you can see it everywhere. It's just standard. And I don't know if people do it because they think it's uh, better or easier. I don't know. In any case, I'm going to try this out here, and maybe I'll take this to the to Ukraine as well. But I don't know yet. Uh, yeah, I think uh, did I mention these? Uh, the so these are for 31.8 handlebar. I didn't have a 31.8 handlebar at all here in the Netherlands. I used some inserts, which were a bit bit annoying. Uh, didn't weren't really the right width, but okay. So I thought, okay, I'll take them to the on the for the bike in Kiev because it has a 31.8 handlebar. I also changed recently to a 31.8 handlebar, which I showed the M-Wave uh, double bar um, for the bike with the Roloff hub. Uh, so I could have could mount it there, but I'm probably going to take it to Kiev. And yeah, I'm just waiting for some paperwork and I'm going to put some stuff in storage and after that I will, if all goes well, go return to Kiev very soon. So all of these things I will be testing and writing about on my website. I will probably make some videos about it, whether I like them, how it works, whether I can solve the creaking of the pinion. Uh, whether the B67 with uh, the springs works in uh, the, the on the worst roads in Ukraine compared to in the Netherlands where I think it does anything, whether this works well in Ukraine, whether this works well in Ukraine, whether this works well on bike trips. Um, yeah, these grips from Hermans, whether they work well, these normal and centered bike position whether they work well is from ergotech uh yeah aha uh -huh, finally i mentioned this briefly the eqx so here you can see this is the one that i bought long ago it has a designation 
by the way, of uh, BS1 6102 2. And this newer one that was on the bike that I bought in Chernivtsi has a designation for the British BS6102 slash 3. Alright. Um, by the way, you can see here glue remains. So this mount is from a hard type of plastic. It should have been nylon or something. That wouldn't have broken. It was glued, and if it hadn't been glued, then I might have been able to rotate slightly, and perhaps that would change the issue with the uh, lines that are not going straight on the road. So the lines that are from art that are artifacts. It w will not fix all the issues with this light, but might make it slightly better. But strangely, both have the exactly the same issue. So these from factory are glued. I tried loosening this and rotating, but doesn't work. So I will need to take this out. Then force it loose to break the glue. And then perhaps I can change and rotate it and see if that improves anything. But I will see, maybe I'll just get rid of this one. I, just, I'm not, I don't need it. I'll take, keep this as a reference or so. And I can just check whether the, it fixes anything just by using another mount that allows me to rotate it. Mm, yeah, I think that's it for now. Bye.